Oh, our election campaign in more than 30 years. But as he toured the constituency, one local Labour councillor told the BBC that a row over the party's choice of candidate has badly damaged party morale. You can't get through all these. There's so many cameras. It can really get through. Beyond the media scrum, there was no doubting the warmth of Mr Blair's reception in Uxbridge, nor how slickly the advanced campaign was prepared. Other attractions couldn't quite compete. Who's that? It's an alarm. Will you be careful, guys? A socialist Labour heckler attempted to drown him out. And Conservatives to overshadow him by unveiling a former parliamentary candidate who's defected to them. But the most serious criticism comes from within Labour. Some local members have refused to help in the campaign, protesting at the decision to replace the general election candidate who came within 800 votes of winning the seat. There are a, a very large number of, of local Labour Party workers, 30, 40, perhaps up to 50 local people who aren't working in this campaign uh, because of the way that Dave Williams has been treated. Uh, he was nominated by over 50% of the branches and affiliated organisations to be the candidate for Uxbridge and he wasn't even shortlisted. We've always made it clear that in by-elections, you know, we'll do our, our very best to get the best candidate, and that's the person that we've got. And so, you know, th there's no disrespect to David Williams or anyone else, but you've got to get the best candidate for Uxbridge. But it remains an issue the other parties will exploit, and before Mr Blair's visit, there were signs some voters are unhappy too. He's very upset when they dropped uh, Williams and Flames. Probably spoil my paper. I would have voted for Williams. The National Party is tightening its grip in the closing days of the campaign, a sign of the importance the party attaches to winning. Defeat here could mark the end of the Labour government's honeymoon. And uncredited, but definitely the reporter there, our political correspondent, Sean Lay. And Sean is with us now. Sean, this big break with tradition, the first Prime Minister to visit a by-election campaign in 30 years or so. Why, given that Labour has just won a thumping majority at a general election, why is this by-election so important? Because, very simply, it's being seen as a test of uh, how much the honeymoon the government is enjoying is actually uh, still having an effect. Uh, Tony Blair's advisers say they see it as a chance for him to meet people, and I suspect also that they regard him as the best asset they have. It is a huge break with tradition. The last Prime Minister to do it was Alec Douglas Hume, and he didn't have much choice because he was the candidate in that by-election. How damaging to the Labour vote, do you think, is this defection of the Labour activist announced today, and these allegations of Labour riding roughshod over the people of Uxbridge. I don't think we should take the defection too seriously. This is the kind of trick that all the parties pull. Uh, Labour was doing it in the general election, coming up with various Tories who'd once stood for Parliament and who uh, had suddenly joined the Labour Party. The Tories are doing it today. What's more significant, I think, is what we heard in that film from people who are normally Labour supporters. And the thing to watch out for next Thursday will be the number of voters who spoil their ballot papers. That might tell us whether that row has really got to ordinary people in Uxbridge. All right, well, you heard it here. Sean Lay, our political correspondent. Thank you very much. And in all, there are 11 candidates contesting next Thursday's by-election in Uxbridge. It's been caused by the death of the Conservative MP, Sir Michael Shersby, who had a majority of 724 at the general election. Thanks, Mike. Well, some sport now.